I'm joined today on the Cumbria Business Growth Hub podcast by Mark Bowman, CEO of Inspira. We've invited Mark on to discuss the work Inspira do and how the clients that they're seeing are, are coping with skills challenges and what this maybe says about the, the broader labour market in Cumbria. So, Mark, can you just start off by introducing yourself and Inspira and what, what do Inspira do? Okay, thanks, Joe. Hi, um, uh, my name's Mark Bowen. I'm Chief Executive Inspirer. I've been Chief Executive at Inspirer for a, a number of years now. Um, Inspirer, um, very much part of the fabric of, of, of Cumbria, um, working in the careers and employability field. Uh, we work right the way across the age ranges, probably starting um, at sort of the ages 13, 14, and then we do, do some younger things, and we work with people right the way through um, well into the sort of retirement ages on on varied programs with with the ultimate aim of getting people jobs, whether that be the first job um, or getting a better job if they want to progress or getting a job if they've been out of work for some time for, for whatever reason. So um, very interesting work, lots of things going, touch on lots of things, um, but uh, a, a lot of um, activity going on at the moment. Yes, definitely. And we'll, we'll get on to talk about some of that in today's episode. Uh, can you just give us an overview of what you've seen over the past few months uh, this year? You know, what sort of skills challenges are people coming to you with uh, when they walk through the door? Yeah, OK, Joe. Yeah, the, the interesting part, um, probably since in 2024, probably since January, as we've seen, um, and an increase in the number of um, unemployed people or people who um, are looking for some support that getting getting in touch with us. Um, now that that's either been through a self referral um, or referral through partner agencies such as the WP and Job Centre Plus, um, and it, it's not a huge increase, um, but it's a, it certainly is a noticeable increase in the. In the numbers that are coming through and that that tends to mean that there's a slight tightening in the labor market um possibly not come through on stats or unemployment figures etc um but the normally the busier we get with with people coming through is it just means that people are needing a little bit more support to find to find work they can't they, they can't necessarily do it do it themselves um and so, some of the things that people will be coming to us for one it's just sometimes the, the, so, so, some of the basic help, um, where to find jobs. Um, they may not have, yeah, if, if particularly if they've had a uh, not been unemployed before, not been looking for work be, before, um, there's been quite a change in how uh, job searches take place over the last four or five years. Um, big move to everything being online where you can actually find jobs. And for a lot of people, that sounds really simple. But if you haven't looked for a job for a while, or you haven't needed to look for a, a job for a while, you simply don't know how to do it without a little bit, little bit of help from, from people. So some of the work that we're doing with people is is, is quite light touch. You know, how you know, look on these sites, um, have you thought about these vacancies that are that 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 happening? Uh, with some people, it's 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 much more intense um, and much more longer term for people who've been maybe uh, not not working for whatever reasons, but sometimes health reasons, etc. Um, it it needs a lot more um, interventions with people, and it can take a much longer period of time. Hopefully, though, it does it does involve um, giving people the skills that can get them back into work. Yeah, yeah, because because the the economy has changed changed so much you know, in in recent years. So if you've been out out of work for say for five ten years. Uh, is it that these people are coming back to like a completely different world where it's everything's on laptops and things are very different? Yeah, it's an interesting question that Joe because I I think some of the jobs um, and the opportunities that are out there, a lot of people want skills, digital skills, etc. They they're, 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 some of the jobs are still similar to to to, to what they were there before. We're still doing a lot of work in construction, helping people recruit. There, we're still doing a lot of work on on security um, issues, helping people recruit recruit in those things. Um, but for other other styles of work, um, the way that you apply for those jobs is is changing 
dramatically. Um, some of the um, online processes that, that are there before, um, you actually need skills to be able to apply for the jobs, not just to do for the not just do the jobs. And that's quite an interesting thing for some people. Many people can get through it quite quickly. Um, but um, there's, if you haven't um, applied for a job in that way before, we haven't done an online interview, or you haven't had to record yourself, which is becoming more and more commonplace in interview processes, that you can need a little bit of help in that. And a lot of it's to do with confidence. Um, so most of us eventually can get used to the technology. Um, there's, a, there's always a challenge there in being able to do it. Um, but having the confidence to then talk to people online, talk to people in different ways, um, just just needs a little bit of work with people if you've never done that thing, that sort of thing before. So the whole digital application and digital processes that go with job search is quite is quite a big area of work for us. Wow, yeah, that that's really interesting, and uh, and yeah, it's maybe not something all, all employers consider when they put out a job ad, you know, on on email on LinkedIn or whatever. You know, how is it always going to be easy enough for for everyone to find it? Yeah, absolutely. And and the, the the processes that go through the the multiple different job sites um, that you can look on and apply for apply for jobs through um, the fact that you know, for some people it can be a real big milestone to have actually got through a process and applied for a job on one of the on, on one of the sites, um, and it's almost like a big weight off their shoulders when they've got they've got that one through, but. What we know is that often applying for one role isn't isn't enough, and there has to be multiple applications going on at the, at the, at the same time. And it's all of those little techniques of trying to help people with that are, that, that that are really quite important because the, if you've not been in work for a while and you get up the motivation, the confidence to to start applying for things, um, what you don't want is sort of demotivating factors to come back into that. Um, you want to be able to keep working with people, keep people on the front foot and keep people moving forward. So keeping them, keep helping people to apply for more than one uh, opportunity is often quite important. So moving on now to talk about your work with young people. Um, you know, are, the, are the challenges different for, for young people that, that you work with or are they, are they still struggling with some of this stuff as well? Yeah, some of the some of the things go right the way across the age ranges, um, making sure people you know know what they want to apply for, presenting themselves, etc., in the best possible way. Digital less so. Young people um, much much more digital savvy in the main, um, but also a real um, potential that the first job that a young person they'll ever apply for might be through a digital route. Um, so that becomes what they what 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 they know. But the the, the challenges for that we see working with work, working with young people are making sure they're aware of all the opportunities, all the routes that might be that 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 might be available to them, um, and making sure that we can link them with employers. Um, because that, that that's crucial. We we work with employers in in two real ways. Um, the one is the way that I talked about a little bit earlier about employers who've got vacancies, um, and it's the here and now. Uh, can they match unemployed people with the vacancies they've got? The other side is employers who are looking for future workforce. Um, and trying to motivate, um, trying to show young people that there could be some fantastic opportunities available in Cumbria. Um, in a couple of years' time, when they're ready to take those opportunities, and the more employers that we can get um, showcasing what they might have available, um, giving a spark to a young person about that might be something that they want to do. If we if we can match more employers with the education settings in that way and take some of the pressure off schools from mm -hmm. from, from doing doing it themselves, that can be really really beneficial. Um, it tends to be. Uh, larger employers who have the the ability and the time and the resource to be able to put yeah. put 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 things into that, but uh, it's fantastically rewarding 
for employees if they can get involved in activities like that. Um, and so, so beneficial for, for young people because it gives them real workplace encounters um, in a way that um, you just you just can't buy unless you have them. So if, if you're an employer and you're, you're thinking about uh, offering a work experience placement, you know, how should you plan for that and, and what should it what should it actually look like? Yeah, I mean, any employers um, looking to offer work experience placements, um, the you know schools, you know, getting in touch with their local schools in 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 that way is 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 the first step, and um, schools will be absolutely delighted um, that with, with with employers being able to sort of offer 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 placements because young people where schools are offering uh, traditional work experience. Um, weeks and opportunities um we do find that young people uh do, so, particularly if they maybe haven't got the parental support or a lot of networks in them they find it difficult to get to to get the placements we've done some work with a school in carlisle um helping the school and, and working with partners to be able to do that and that was that was really really beneficial for, 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 for being doing that but if an employer is putting together a a work experience program. It it's just trying to make it as interactive as as as, as possible. Is for, from my perspective, there's always two things going on. The one is about the jobs that people might do in the future and what the employer might need in the future. But uh, but crucially, also helping the young person understand what it's like to to work, uh, what it's like to start at a certain time, finish at a certain time. What are the employees' expectations around, you know, clothes, et cetera? Because um, I think uh, many of us have preconceived ideas about what that might be. And again, that's something that's changed a lot over over the last few years. Uh, my, my take is that some employers, but not all, much more relaxed on on, on that side of that, that style of things. Um, so uh, trying to... Uh, find the right vibe for a young person can be quite quite a, a difficult thing. So if an employee can help people yeah. understand that oh, in this office, we're happy for people to dress like that, but yeah. in the other department, you might have to dress in a different way. They're sort of things that you know, are t- t- you know, can take a lifetime to learn, to be honest. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's got kind of more difficult, hasn't it? Because it used to be that you just wore a suit and tie and then that was that. But now it's you need to know, you know what's appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah so, it's really, it's 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 really quite interesting. Yeah, you know, fifteen years ago, I would definitely have been sitting on this podcast with a tie on. Uh, yeah. it, it doesn't happen as much these days. Oh, yeah. Would you still recommend a suit and tie for an interview, or or is that gone out of fashion now as well? Uh, yeah, it's personal view. I don't think you can ever be too smart for an interview. I don't think anybody's ever going to mark you down. For, for, for that but I think um, I wouldn't necessarily say you've got to wear a, a suit and tie all the time but I think you know but being as smart as you possibly can in an interview setting is, is always a good idea interesting um, yes good 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 advice there um, so get, getting on now to kind of the other end of the scale and, and uh, people that are perhaps reaching retirement age uh, you know what sort of challenges do they face, and 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 how do you help them? I, I know we touched on the the digital skills stuff, which might be relevant in some cases, but you know it's 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 interesting that you get to work with such a range of different people. Yeah, the um the, the sort of older age um it's been quite an interesting uh, piece of work. I I'd say that's come to the fore much more since the pandemic, mm. um and. I suspect um, a number of people who couldn't work during the pandemic um, possibly took the opportunity to um, enter retirement maybe a couple of years earlier than they may have been planning to do, but they weren't working in COVID. They they managed to make ends meet, um, and and that and more people um, retired. But what we what we've seen over the last couple of years is people um, looking to return. Um, to, to to work not always full time, so for an employer from an employer's point of view, mm-hmm. um, being open minded to flexible opportunities um, is 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 there. But what I've really seen from an employer's point of view, um, or what employers are telling us, is that um, there's there's almost no rules on the age 
any more employees. If, if an employee can see somebody who's um, willing to work, can meet their flexibilities, the employee can meet their, their, their the, the candidate's um, uh, flexibilities, um, there there's really is um, uh, probably a more open-mindedness to people's age, whether it be young or old, than I've seen, um, well, than I've seen before, really. Wow. Yeah, that, that's interesting. And, and yeah, you, you seeing employers allowing flexible working and allowing home working and things like that, is that, is that a trend that's still going on? Yeah, I think so. Um, it depends on what the industry is. Um, some yeah. some jobs we do a lot of work with the with with the care sector, the NHS, mm -hmm. etc. Much harder for 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 work. Uh, you know, people being able to work from home and in, in those ways, but still a lot of flexibilities maybe in the hours that that that, that are available. Um, and, and I think we are seeing that. Um, I think most employers uh, have had to think have, have have had to have a rethink around different processes, um, uh, different expectations around um, whether it be working from home or just flexibility in in general. Um, and I think I've read I've read things that that's that's tightening up a little bit. Mm. Um, again, again. But certainly, it feels for the employers that we speak to our own experience as an employer that we've still got to be able to offer some flexibility to be able to attract uh, attract the right people. Yeah, I think I think that covers everything, Mark. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's been a really interesting conversation. Um, is is there any is where where can people uh, easily find Inspira in your website and social media and things like that? Yeah, just uh, in, inspire on social media and web and in, in, in website, etc. But um, particularly on our LinkedIn pages and social channels, um, there's some great videos on there at the moment, which have got testimonies uh, from the people we've been working with, whether that be clients or um, employers. And there's some real good stories. There. And I think if people want to find out a bit more, you get a real feel for what Inspire is about by having a look at those videos. Brilliant. We'll put that link into the description. Um, thanks everyone for listening and thanks for your time, Mark. Thanks very much, Joe. Good to talk.